tell her what you need to do, and it's how it's going to be. How many of them don't work that easy? You're supposed to love your wife into her change. Are you with me? God did not call you to stand on top of your wife. He called you to stand beside your wife. She is a helpmate. Amen? And so if she doesn't see the vision that you're putting forth, you need to find ways to communicate it where she can see it. Amen? My wife is a visual learner. I had to learn what type of learner she is. And I had to give her a visual picture of where God wanted us to go. Are y'all with me? I had to find out how she excels best. And as her husband, as the priest of the home, I had to be able to prepare a table where she could excel and be in a win-win situation and follow my leadership. Are y'all with me? I had to ask God to show me things about my wife. I knew when we were in, in labor, we did the, the, the husband coach childbirth together. And I remember my first son, we were, he was up there. He didn't want to come down. He was up there for eight hours. Eight hours. She was, she was open, ready to come. They was wide open, but he wouldn't come down. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. She's in pain. And, and I thank God the nurse grad came to you. She said, baby, she looked at my wife. She says, I got six kids. I had them all natural. You trying to have a natural childbirth? She says, guess what? This baby ain't going to come by itself. She said, you're going to have to grab this leg, these legs. She said, we're going to help you, but you got to grab these legs. And you got to tell her, you got to start pushing. We ain't waiting for the doctor. I said, okay, you know what you're doing? She said, I said, okay, you know what you're doing? She said, I love Jesus. I'm a Christian. I had me at Northside. I said, you're a God sent. She said, now you hold him. So we're going to help you. You got to hold. And you got to push. And we were pushing. Nothing would happen. And then it would happen. His head would come in. And then he would crown. And then he'd go back up. Oh, boy. He's a big-headed boy. Come on down. <laughs> I'm like, Lord. And I'm looking. And the nurse said, well, man, we right there. She, I said, I thought, my wife, I said, my wife's a visual learner. I said, do you have a mirror? She said, what do you mean? I said, do you have a mirror? Get me a mirror. And this baby will come out. Holy Ghost, get. she went and got a mirror. Am I telling the truth, honey? Got a mirror, praise God, put it at the end of the bed. That baby was out in three minutes. Are you with me? Because as soon as she pushed, I said, honey, look up. Look at it. She saw the head. The lady was like, stop, stop. <laughs> Push that boy right on out. Are you with me? Big head, big shoulders, all of that. Amen? Because she's visual. Amen? Doctor didn't know that. The nurse didn't know that. I knew that about my wife. Got to show you how to lead. Wives, you got to know how, who and what your husband is. You got to know how to talk and when to talk. Are y'all with me? When he's stressed out, that may not be a good time to... Are y'all with me? Well, you never listen to me. Well... Amen. Proverbs 16 and 27. It says, but be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by what? Renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Proverbs 16 and 27. It says what? The idle hands are the devil's workshop. Idle lips are his mouthpiece. How many know you can't, you can't, that's in the New Living Translation. How many know you can't stay idle? You got to get your mind busy for the work of God. He said, well, Dad, I'm always having these demonic thoughts, and I'm always saying, guess what? You got to get, get your mind thinking on something besides yourself. You got to get busy for God. Go help somebody else out. Go help in the homeless ministry. Go help somebody in need. Are y'all with me? But you got to get busy doing the work of the Lord. My wife would tell you, if I find myself getting attacked, praise God, our family getting attacked, well, I'm going to give God some praise. I'm going to go out and go witness, and I'm going to go to the grocery store and go witness to somebody. I'm going to go to Walmart and go witness and just tell them about Jesus. I'm going to look for the person that looked the worst. The worst on let them know that God can make a difference. Are you with me? If we're having financial problems, I don't find somebody I can bless financially. Are y'all with me? Ephesians 6, 11, we said put on the whole armor of God. Let's talk about what the whole armor of God is. Who can tell me what type of helmet we need? The helmet of salvation. Helmet, what does that mean? A mindset of deliverance. A mindset of deliverance. What, is it, what does it mean to have a mindset of deliverance? We just talked about it. Colossians 1, right? 
Set your mind on what? Things that are above. Things that, that God speaks. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If God be for me, who can stand against me? All things are working together for my good because I love the Lord and I'm called according to his purposes. Blessed is me because I walk of not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sinners in the seat of the scorner, but my delight is in the Lord. Psalms chapter 1. I'm quoting. These are things when I find myself and the enemy's trying to tell me one thing, I start quoting the word over my life. I put my name in the scriptures. Blessed is Howard because I walk of not in the counsel of the godly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scorner. But Howard's delight is in the law of the Lord, and in that law I meditate day and night. I will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that will bring forth my fruit in due season. And everything I put my hands to do, Howard shall what? Prosper. Declare the word of God over yourself. You got to get that word in you so that you can declare it over your life. Amen? After I put on the helmet of salvation, what I want to have, I want to have something of righteousness. What I want of righteousness? The breastplate of righteousness. You got to know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Are y'all with me? That's where you get your breath. The breath represents your spirit, protects your spirit. When you know who you are in Christ, you won't fall for whatever the enemy calls you. Say the enemy says you are nothing. No, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm his royal diadem. I'm a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Are you with me? The Bible says, I'm his lively stone. 1 Peter 2 and 1. Are y'all with me? I got to declare the word over my life. The Bible says, I'm in Ephesians chapter 1, I'm raised with him in heavenly places. You got to declare what the word of God says about you. Amen? You got the breastplate of righteousness. What else do you want to have? You want to, what do you want to have? You want to have, what's this? Of truth. Belt of truth. The belt of truth. How many know you got to walk in truth? You shall know the truth in what? The truth will set you free. The truth is, if, 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 if your foundation is not in truth, and truth, I mean, not, I'm talking about the word of God. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. It has to be based off the word of God. He is the word. If you stand in truth, guess what? Everything will come in line. Everything will come in line. So you want to have the belt of truth. Then you want to have what type of, what type of, what? Shield of faith. So you can block the darts of the enemy, right? You got to walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says the just shall live by what? Faith. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. You got to have this armor on. You got to have what? Your feet shod with the preparations of what? The gospel of peace. You got to be walking in peace. That means you need to be walking in forgiveness. You cannot look for God to bless you if you are not in forgiveness. Forgiveness speaks of the grace of God. God's resources at Christ's expense. You cannot obtain. I see so many Christians and so-called believers that say they're believing, but they're in unforgiveness. You got to forgive that old husband, that old spouse, if you want God to bless you. Are y'all with me? Forgive that person that hurt you on the job. Forgive that person that did you wrong. Forgive that sibling so that you can walk in the grace of God, so you can have your full arm on. Are you with me? And then you'll have peace. You got to learn to say, I'm sorry. If that person's not willing to say they're sorry, you got to be willing to say you're sorry. Amen, light bulb. Amen, chair. You got to be willing. How many know in marriage you got to be willing to say I'm sorry sometimes? A lot of times. I was wrong. Let me say, tell you something, husbands. Let me tell you something, wives. That person wants to follow you more when they realize that you can come, come, come clean and be truthful. When I tell Pastor Tackler I was wrong, you were right. It was painful to my flesh. But it takes our relationship up a whole nother notch. Are y'all with me? Because she knows that I, when she's right, I'm willing to say that you're right. Are you with me? And we're still growing together. Amen? Amen. Next one, we're almost finished. Almost everybody got that. This is the armor that God speaks of. I'm going to do one point and we're going to be, and then I'm closing. Next one, please. Okay. Next slide, please. I'm closing with this. This goes to that, that, that belt of truth that we're talking about. We're dealing with strongholds. You've got to understand this. Behind every stronghold 
is a lie, is a lie designed to exploit you by the enemy. You have to understand the enemy is not your friend. He moves in lies. I'm telling you, you one of the first things you got to learn to do as a believer is walk in truth. Get a true assessment of who you really are in Christ. If you see, I tell people all this time when we're counseling, I said, if you if you give me a lie and I fix a lie, you're gonna still have a lie. But if you come in truth, if you say I'm impatient, I I I, I don't want to wait for the process. No, I want to wait for the process. But why is it God moving? I said, you just started the process a week ago. How long have you been doing wrong? Twenty years. A lie is a place of personal bondage where God's word has been subjugated to an unscriptural idea or personally confused belief that is held to be true. Basically, you make that lie of the enemy an idol. What's a lie? I'm just like this. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm just like this. I can't never change. Oh, I 